Okay, so let's move on. Now that we've talked about the major conceptual differences between the innate and adaptive systems, and since we've already talked about how different kinds of pathogens are recognized by innate cells, let's talk about how antigens from particular pathogens are eventually presented to cells of the adaptive system, that is, B and T cells. After this slide here, we'll talk about the different kind of protection that's offered by B cells and T cells. We'll also talk about how T cells are activated and the different kinds of T cells that form after activation. We'll then talk about antibody structure and function. And then finally, we'll talk about the different kinds of antibodies, which are known as antibody isotypes. On this slide, however, let's talk about the MHC class 1 and class 2 molecules. These are the molecules that the cells of the body use to present antigen to B and T cells. In humans, these molecules are encoded by genes known as human leukocyte antigen genes. I know it seems confusing that these genes are called antigen genes, but that's because scientists originally discovered them as molecules that were found on leukocytes, or white blood cells, that were being recognized during transplant experiments. Hence, they received the name human leukocyte antigen genes. We now know, however, that these molecules have a very important role in presenting antigen. MHC class 1 molecules here, for example, can display antigens here in what is known as the peptide binding groove. MHC class 2 molecules also have a peptide binding groove and can present antigen there. Let's take a look at this table which points out important differences between MHC class 1 and class 2 molecules. MHC class 1 molecules are encoded by the genes human leukocyte antigen A, human leukocyte antigen B, and human leukocyte antigen C. Class 2 molecules, on the other hand, are encoded by HLA-DR, HLA-DP, and HLA-DQ. Knowing the history of the notation is not important, but you should know that DR, DP, and DQ encode class 2 molecules, and HLA A, B, and C encode class 1 molecules. And you can remember this because DR, DP, and DQ have two letters. Thus, they encode for class 2 molecules. And of course, A, B, and C are just one letter, and thus encode for class 1. MHC class 1 molecules are found on all nucleated cells of the body. Of course, they are not found on red blood cells because red blood cells do not have a nucleus. MHC class 2 molecules, on the other hand, are more restricted in the body. They are only found on antigen-presenting cells, which include macrophages, which I'm just going to abbreviate this way, dendritic cells, and B cells. Macrophages and dendritic cells, of course, are part of the innate system, while B cells are part of the adaptive. Nevertheless, these are the three main antigen-presenting cells in the entire body. For the boards, there are two important T cells that you should be familiar with, CD8 positive T cells and CD4 positive T cells. CD8 and CD4 refer to two different co-receptors that are found on T cells. Mature T cells that are found circulating through the blood and through the lymph nodes only express one of these two molecules on their surface. And these molecules determine which MHC molecule the T cell will recognize. If the T cell has a CD8 coreceptor, it will recognize MHC class 1 molecules. If it has CD4, it will only recognize MHC class 2. And I'll draw that on this slide like this. Here is the TCR, and here is the CD8 coreceptor. Of course, this is the T cell, but I've only drawn a part of it. The same thing happens over here on the class 2 side. Here is our T cell receptor, here is our T cell, and here is the CD4 coreceptor. If this is our T cell receptor, what cell is this? Right, this cell membrane must belong to an antigen presenting cell. That is, a macrophage, a dendritic cell, or a B cell. What about over here on this side? What cell is displaying the MHC class 1 molecule? This is, of course, any nucleated cell. The last important difference between class 1 and class 2 molecules is that class 1 molecules 
Present peptides from intracellular pathogens. That is, pathogens which gain access into cells. The most classic example, of course, include viruses. But other pathogens, like certain kinds of bacteria, like listeria, for example, and certain kinds of protozoa, are also intracellular. Thus, cells of the body will present antigens from these intracellular pathogens via class I molecules, which can then be recognized by CD8 T cells. Class II molecules, on the other hand, present extracellular pathogens. Again, most classically this includes bacteria, but it can also include funguses and parasites. Okay, so on this slide we've talked about the major differences between class I and class II molecules. And these are the major differences that are very high yield for step one, so know them well. Interestingly, certain allelic variants of the HLA genes are associated with autoimmune and other kinds of diseases. Here we see that a few variants of the class I molecules, namely HLA-A3, HLA-B27, and HLA-B8, are associated with the diseases that you see on the right. Allelic variants in the class II molecules are associated with other diseases, many of which are autoimmune in nature. This should not be terribly surprising, since class I and class II molecules present antigens to the cells of the adaptive system. We can imagine how, in some cases, instead of presenting a peptide coming from a pathogen, these molecules might present a peptide or part of a protein that actually comes from self, that is, a protein that normally belongs to the host. Although there's no definitive answer, the allelic variants that you see here may bind to certain self-proteins with higher than normal affinity and could therefore present these peptides and activate B and T cells, which would then cause autoimmunity. What do I mean by allelic variants? Let's just make sure we're all on the same page here. The HLA genes are found on chromosome 6 in the human. Of course, one chromosome comes from your father, and the other chromosome 6 comes from your mother. On chromosome 6, we find the genes for HLA-DP, HLA-DQ, and HLA-DR. Of course, the maternal chromosome has the same set of genes. Further along on chromosome 6, we also find the genes for HLA-A, B, and C, although they actually pop up in this order. Now, of course, the genes that you inherit from your father and the genes that you inherit from your mother are going to be slightly different. In other words, the DP gene from your dad will be slightly different from the DP gene in your mom. And this is the case for all the genes. Now, the surprising thing about these genes is that they are incredibly polymorphic. By that I mean that if we looked at the entire human population and we wanted to know how many different variants of the DR gene exist, we would actually find out that to date there are actually 506 different variants of the DR gene. Now, of course, you as a person only have two of these 506 variants one coming from your father and one coming from your mother. And that's actually what these numbers refer to. For example, let's say that you inherited the variant DR number 7 from your mom. So here you would have DR number 7. And let's say from your dad that you inherited the DR allelic variant number 2. That is, you have DR number 2 here. That's actually not very good because that puts you at risk for, as you see here, multiple sclerosis, hay fever, lupus, and good pastures. And because you have DR7 from your mom, this puts you at risk for steroid-responsive nephrotic syndrome. Now, of course, knowing the number of allelic variants is not important, but I'm just mentioning it to explain the concept of allelic variants, and also to explain what is meant by the term polymorphism. The HLA genes, in fact, are some of the most polymorphic genes in the human genome. Again, for your interest, I'll just point out that there are actually 728 known variants of the HLA-B gene in the human population. But of course, you only get one from your dad and one from your mom. HLA-C has 210 known variants, and HLA-A has 414. But of course, only some of these variants are associated with diseases, and these are the ones that you should know for the exam. HLA-B27, for example, is a particularly unfortunate one to have, as it can be associated with four different kinds of diseases. Alright, so enough of HLA. Let's move on.